Shout out to Chargers Unleashed, Sebastian Joseph. They know the vibes. We outside. You're listening to the Chargers Unleashed podcast with your host, Dan Wolkenstein and Jake Hefner. Welcome to another edition of Chargers Unleashed. Jake Hefner and Dan Wolkenstein here with you from the LA Football Network. Today's show, of course, being brought to you by Bet Online, Charger Bolt Family, Rock Solid Sports Memorabilia, and Liquid Death. If this is your first time tuning into the show, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Dan Wolkenstein, uh, been a little bit of a hiatus for Chargers Unleashed over the past week and a half. A lot of things that have just been uh, timely events going on if you can't tell by the way that i look or the way that i sound i'm just getting over being sick on top of moving on top of selling the house uh yes what you can't see around me is that there is just a room full of shambles and shit around me so a lot of a lot of things have been going on in the personal life of of one jay kaffner and i know that there is a few things that have been going on in the in the world of the wolkenstein family as well but we're happy to be back uh, lots to talk about as we go into this week 12 matchups between the Chargers and the Arizona Cardinals. And more so, I guess it's like <laughs> maybe just finally just that 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 come to Jesus meeting, Dan, where you just got to look at yourself in the mirror and say, look, is this who the Chargers really are, despite even what their record says, despite the fact that they are now looking outside uh, of the playoff picture at a five and five record. So, yeah, Dan and I are going to. Dan and I are are going to be completely honest. We're going to be as honest as we can be uh, for the opening <laughs> part of this show. Let's just let's just say that before we really get into the to the meat and potatoes of this. Yes. Um. Before we even get into the preview against the Cardinals, we're definitely going to get into like what has transpired over the last couple of weeks and kind of what to make of this Chargers team as it currently stands. Um. Again, echoing Jake's sentiment. Apologies for. Uh, being a bit MIA these last 10 days or so. Uh, it has been a wild last uh, time. It's been a little bit of a blur, but we're back. Um, and, you know, of course, it comes on a time where the Chargers lose two straight, two primetime games back-to-back against the 49ers and the beloved Chiefs, uh, which I was yeah. there in the stands for the Chiefs game. And... uh so lots to get into in terms of just uh, brutal honesty. And I think this goes for both of us. And so if you're looking for pessimism and optimism, you'll probably get more than pessimism, but you'll still get some optimism. I, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to take it away, uh, Jake, but before we get into any of that, our friends over at liquid death are trying to hydrate the world, uh, murder the thirst, if you will. I know we're into the holiday season, but you just passed Thanksgiving or you just passed Thanksgiving, just passed Halloween. Um, Murdering Thirst, friends over at Liquid Death. Talk about them. Well, if I could be a visual spokesperson for Liquid Death just by my face right now, I think I would be a winner as far as just Liquid Death in general. And the, and the blood shirt you got on right now. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's a rock <laughs> shirt. Blood, sweat, respect. That's what it is. Yes, but I'm basically a visual representation of Liquid Death, <laughs> essentially. But if you're looking for a drink that will definitely be hydrating, uh, keeping you hydrated and uh, murdering thirst, as Dan says, all over the place. Um, if you're going to your local Ralphs, your Gelson's, your uh, your Albertsons, your 7-Elevens, whatever happens to be near you, and you happen to see a section of tall boys that is in the uh, Power Raider, the water section, don't be fooled because it's not a uh, fistful of tall boys. It's actually the newest <laughs> sparkling water drink that is out there. Um, Liquid Death is a fantastic drink that, as Dan mentioned, murdering thirst, Great way to keep yourself hydrated. They do a great contribution to the recycling efforts all over the country. Uh, make sure you go out if you have not tried this yet. I know Dan Wolkenstein is, still has yet to try it. He really does need to get onto it because uh, Liquid Death is, is fantastic. And uh, definitely, if you're looking for something to keep yourself hydrated with a little bit of flavor, Liquid Death is the answer for you. So go out and get yourself uh, some Liquid Death today and get yourself hydrated. So, Jake... Um... You know, the these last two games for this Chargers team and for the think this fan base has been a bit of a struggle um for for many reasons. And Chargers lose one score games to both the Niners and the Chiefs. Chargers are winning in both of these games. 
uh, lose it at the end. And against the 49ers, look, you are a little battered and bruised. We've talked about it all season. The Chargers game against the Chiefs, you got a lot of guys back, although Mike Williams had one play. Um, what do you make of, like, 5,000-foot view? Five and three to five and five. Given the current state of the Chargers team and injuries, given the current state of like the playoff landscape, given the current state of, you know, um, this fan base, like what is, what should we make of this team right now? I have my answers, but I'm going to let you go first because I know we're approaching happy time for Jake Hefner where he's already thinking about April, thinking about like what to, give for food at his parties thinking about like draft position it is my birthday month so yes i should be happy for april of course yes (laughs) and also it's draft month uh if you don't know jake hefner loves that time of year and we're getting closer and closer to the point where jake can actually start talking about it as being um something the charges should be looking at but what say you jake dan it's such a You know, and I've been stewing on this over the last couple of days, just thinking about this as a whole, because when you look at the 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs game, the Chargers, up until these last two games, their emphasis was, okay, they got to stop putting themselves in these double digit holes to start the game and they need to get off to faster starts. You heard Brandon Staley talk about it two weeks ago, saying we are going to fix that. We changed up practice dramatically in order to get off to fast starts. And in both of these games, they go down and they score opening drive touchdowns and they get the ball rolling in a much better way in terms of efficiency goes that we would expect that, especially against those other teams that they played over those, that four week stretch that they would have done that they should have done. And so, and Justin Herbert looks healthier is throwing the ball a lot better. And in these two opening drives, the, the good of the Joe Lombardi playbook was on full display. And you just think to yourself, okay, you can move the ball like that. Got it. But then it just, the game matriculates on. And in both of these games, the Chargers went into halftime with leads. And then in the second half, Dan, it's like, now it's flip-flopped. Now the Chargers have a hard time scoring late. In the San Francisco game, they were completely shut out. Did not score another point in that game. Chiefs game, you were shut out in the third quarter, took a late game lead in the fourth. Unfortunately, the defense yielded to a Patrick Mahomes led offense, which in what circumstance, I mean, did anybody think that that was not going to happen <laughs> in reality? I mean, you leave a minute and 40 seconds with two timeouts. That's an eternity for Patrick Mahomes and a chiefs led offense. But it, it's, I think the biggest thing that I, I found found out, Dan, especially in these last two games, if you were to just take a micro chasm of those two games, and it's happened in other spurts as well, whether you're talking offensively or defensively, is the biggest thing is that I think that whether it, we're talking Joe Lombardi, Brandon Staley, the in-game adjustments are not there to be made. Brandon Staley, in my opinion, got educated, got a first class lesson from Andy Reid on how to coach and, and how to and how to make adjustments. Because in both those games, Dan, it was very it was very strange because we I I seriously thought that San Francisco was going to just run the ball down the Chargers' throats, but in the second half, Dan, they played more of the game that everybody kind of expected them to play. Then they went back to the running game. It was Christian McCaffrey. It was Elijah Mitchell. And they were just controlling the line of scrimmage like everybody thought that they would against the Chargers' unfortunate run defense that they have had plagued them for the majority of this season. And not only did you get shut out offensively in the second half, but the 49ers were basically able to slow that game down, control the tempo, and play their game of football. It was exactly the same in the second half against the Chiefs. They weren't running the ball as much, not to say that you have to when you have Patrick Mahomes at quarterback, but that first drive for the Chiefs in the thir- in the third quarter, there was eight plays, eight runs. Patrick Mahomes did not complete a single pass in that particular drive. 
Isaiah Pacheco ran over, ended up running over 100 yards in that game. But it was just that change of pace that was able to put the Chargers defense in a position to where you don't know you're going to be you're you're basically going to be questioning on how to cover them. And we're talking now about a Chiefs team that at you already were going into this game without Juju. You know you didn't have McCole Hardman. You ended up losing Kadarius Tony for them in the early part of the game. So you were down essentially three receivers for the Chiefs, and they were still able to just own the line of scrimmage with three tight ends and Sky Moore. As and, and I think they lost Clyde edwards Lair as well. Also that. So <laughs> even with that, Dan, so any, anybody wants to talk about, oh, well, the Chargers have had all these games without their wide receivers, blah, blah, blah. Well, this is Andy Reid showing you it still can be done. You so, still can be a productive offense. And I, I know I've kind of just, I've rambled a little bit here in my point, Dan, but this has been the one thing that I think that has really hurt the Chargers in different spurts of the season. And then more recently over these last two games is that I feel like whether we're talking about Joe Lombardi running the same vanilla conservative offense at spurts, because it's like, how do you go from that first drive to then the conventional offense that we saw in the second half of the 49ers game, the third quarter of the chiefs game. And then from a defensive perspective, I know you're missing players, and I know that from you know we we just can't go. The run, but, but no, but the anymore. but the running but the running game sucked. The running defense sucked before we lost players, other Correct. than Joey Jim Joey Bosa. Yes, yes. So I I can't use this injury excuse anymore. You have to figure out ways to to cover better. It's it's the same soft zone shell scheme that you just continue to run. Third down plays. I mean. Give me a break. Third and 17 when you got the Chiefs backed up against their own end zone and you end up letting that conversion go. That's inexcusable. The Chargers are one of the worst teams defensively in the league and have been the entire year in third down conversions for the opposing team. Absolutely horrible. And when you do that and when you're not able to get off the field, you're going to be in a tough position. So I, I, I think it's, it, it is coaching aspects, Dan, because you know that these players are fighting their ass, uh, asses off. You could tell that they are. You could tell that they're not happy with it. But sitting at five and five now in an unfortunate situation to where your playoff hopes do not solely rest on the performance of you and on your shoulders anymore. Now you have to eventually hope for some unfortunate downfall from the rest of these teams that are in front of you while you basically have to run the table these last uh, handful of weeks that we have for the NFL season. I, I just don't know if it can be done, Dan. And and truth of the matter is, the, the biggest question is, do you trust the coordinators or the coaching staff to get it right? So I'm going to try to be succinct here. Um, <laughs> week 10 against the 49ers, I think that was the game I expected, kind of a – slugfest chargers lost a close one they were by far the more decimated team due to injury and it showed they showed a lot of heart everyone talked about them playing their asses off and they lost like they could have won but they lost the chiefs game got a lot of guys back keenan allen came back and you could see how big a difference that makes you know keenan allen other than Corey lindsley might be the second most important person on this offense for justin herbert no Gerald Everett. Mike Williams gets hurt after the first play. So they're kind of still down some weapons, whatever. Um, you know, defense, you held the Chiefs to 23 points until the very end, uh, that last drive. And like you said, it's, it's hard to expect your defense to stop Patrick Mahomes when he has two timeouts and eternity of time going up against this defense. Now, should Travis Kelsey be going all over them? No. Derwin James got beat, which I'll take Derwin James against Travis Kelsey all the time. And he did very good, except for one play. Unfortunately for me, and I'm kind of noticing this, and I don't know if this is a coaching issue or a player issue, but the dichotomy between Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert and the amount of rain that they have on their offenses respectively is night and day. 
you talked about how the Chiefs, you know, decimated by injuries or offense are without like their wide receiver one, two, they are down their running back one. They basically have like six tight ends and Patrick Mahomes and Pacheco. That's basically it. And somehow that Chiefs offense doesn't look very different. The Chiefs offense looks pretty good, all things considered, without those guys. And it's because of the guy snapping the ball. Like, Patrick Mahomes is that guy. And I think what I'm noticing is, you know, everyone talked about earlier where the Chargers coaching staff, Lombardi, whatever, they weren't letting Herbert, like, throw it downfield, blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't, I, it's less about downfield stuff to me. It's less about aggression to me and play calling. To me, it's more about, like, if I'm Coach Lombardi, and I'm looking at this offense and seeing how stagnant it is at times and seeing how defenses are able to run the same thing over and over and over and over and over again and just beat you. I, I look at this and I say, at some point, you look at the talent of Justin Herbert and say, you know what, Justin, what do you want to do? Like, clear the whiteboard. Like, just go be special. Go do it. You don't need to run whatever call. Like, you take it. You take over. And watching Patrick Mahomes do his thing and basically have no border around his sandbox to play and then looking at Justin Herbert and kind of his sandbox that's just kind of like closing in on him little by little. Now, granted, the offensive line for the Chargers was not doing very good. But, like, the play calling for the Chiefs was allowing – Patrick Mahomes to kind of go out and do his thing. That's part of it. But then the other part of it is I kind of look at this and I'm like, okay, the Chargers were winning basically all game. And this is kind of a harsh reality. And I might get heat for this. And I'm fine with it. Patrick Mahomes had the ball, two timeouts in an eternity, drove right down the field with ease. Yes, he got helped by the holding call on Derwin James on third down that ended up becoming the first down. All of a sudden, they go down the field and score. The Chargers still, again, Chargers got the ball back with like, what, 37 seconds and at least one timeout. Justin Herbert's got Keenan Allen. He's got his guy. He, 37 seconds to go down and score a field goal. You know how many times we have seen a Josh Allen-led team, a Joe Burrow-led team, or a Patrick Mahomes team with under 30 seconds or around 30, 40 seconds go right down the field? Easy. Cupcake defense, ties it, go to overtime, make it happen. Like, you, if you're the defense going against, against those guys, like, you expect it. Now, Justin Herbert had no time. I get it. The first... The, he got sacked the first play of that last drive. Second play, throws up a double coverage because he's getting rushed. But at some point, whether it's the coaching or it's Justin Herbert, they've got to be like, no, like, we got this. Like, I'm not going down this way. And I don't know if that's Justin needing to kind of take that next level in kind of taking over or letting his personality I know he's not the rah rah guy that's going to go out and like yell over people, but like at some point when you have a franchise quarterback who has that much talent, you can't go out that way. And as much as it pains me, I see tipped interceptions over and over at the end of the game. And I'm like, come on, you cannot seriously keep losing like this. At some point, it's a trend that your quarterback is going out and doing that. Now, sure, are the chips stacked against him? Yes. Is the defense helping him out much? No, at the end of games. Like, are there guys injured? Sure. But look at Patrick Mahomes and look what he and Andy Reid and company are overcoming on offense. And look at the Chargers and Justin Herbert and company and what they are not able to overcome on offense. I'm sorry, but they don't have Tyreek Hill. They're down their top two receivers. And you're getting bludgeoned by tight end two, three, and obviously tight end one. And then Pacheco's running all over you. Like, that offense is doing just fine. Sitting there in the stands, Jake, watching that game, you wouldn't even know that they were down the receivers. And it, 
So people want to talk about the coaching staff and play calling, all that kind of stuff. Like a part of me just wants this coaching staff to just let go of the reins a little bit and almost and almost do less. I don't need them to coach better, like coach less. Cause like it's, it's when you have a special talent like this and you have special talents like what are on this team that are currently healthy, let them go do their thing. And it, it's just, it's unfortunate because like, other than that last drive for both offense and defense, Chargers go right down the field. Amazing catch by Keenan Allen on third and long. Score a touchdown. Go up against the Chiefs. Place is going ballistic. Like the Chargers came through. Their offense buckled up. Their offense went right down the field. Goes up against the Chiefs. But again, like it's that's that's why Patrick Mahomes is Patrick Mahomes. And I think that is the next level, whether it's this coaching staff or the next one. Or it's Justin Herbert, whatever. But there's got to be some gut check time here where whether it's on defense with Derwin and company or offense with Keenan and Justin and Corey Lindsley and Austin Eckler, but at some point, these players got to step up and be like, you know what? Like, we're not going out like this. Because coordinators come and go. Justin Herbert isn't going anywhere. Like, your franchise is around this guy. That's the frustrating part for me is like, you know, people talk about the Chargers team, you know, they just get out, outmanned, that other teams are more physical than they are and all this kind of stuff. Like, to some extent, sure, you know, and I think the injuries certainly play a part in that, but it was happening before the defense was injured, so you can't really talk about that. I, and it's, it's like the, they're not as, I just don't know if they're getting out coached. They're just co- they're just coaching too much. Like, and and I guess that means they're being out coached. But like when you got talent like this, and everyone can address the talent in the room, if the talent isn't on display, like that's because of coaching. Cause you put talented players out there and just go in the backyard or somewhere and say, hey, go ball out, like those guys are gonna have fun. But, like, if you're putting all this crap in their head about things they got to do, like it just kind of goes away. And I think that's what – look, like, is it, the season's not over. You might disagree with me. The season's not over. I've always said if they could somehow get to 6-5, and five, I think 10 wins make the playoffs. The last two weeks have been what we expected. No one expected. No one thought the Chargers should win those games until the games are played. And all of a sudden, like, oh, wow, the Chargers look good. Big stretch coming up. Obviously. I think the Titans game is going to be tough. Colts game, I think now doesn't look as tough as it. Miami's going to be tough. Miami's going to be tough. You beat Tennessee. You beat Miami. You beat the Colts. You're right back in. Do I think they're going to do that? You have to at least run the table or if not lose at least one of these, these last games. On top of having some help from other from other teams ahead of you in the playoff, I think, they, I think I, they've got two games to lose in the still make. In my opinion, I think they can lose two games, make the playoffs. I think ten and seven gets in. the The last piece I'll say on this, Dan, and and kind of just piggybacking off of your comments on coaching aspect, and I, and again, it really has come to a head over these last two weeks in the second half when you're looking at it. Has Brandon Staley lost his aggressiveness? You know, there's there's times when I want to say, uh, yeah, maybe a little bit, but then there's other times where you just kind of say, okay, that was that was better. That feels like the old Brandon Staley again. And, it, and it's weird to kind of say that just because, okay, you have now gone away from getting yourself in a double-digit hole to start the game. You've scored two opening drive touchdowns over these last two weeks. But, Dan, it, examples of this. Second half in that 49ers game. Brandon Staley had said that they had started switching their coverages from man that they were able to pick apart. That's why they were able to move the ball so well in that first half. And he had noticed that they had changed that. So they went away from it. But Dan, in, in those, I think it was, I think it was five or six possessions that they ended up having throughout the course of the second half. They ran the ball five 
out of those six times on first down and netted nothing. Netted nothing. On top of that, you also decided that that was a good time, very late in the game, to run a reverse to DeAndre Carter. Not only to the better side of the left. No, you ran it to the side where Nick Bosa was at. Also behind your backup right tackle at that point at with Foster Sorrell. And that was just the weird part of that game to me. It's just, it, it really got conservative. And then example in the Chiefs game, Dan. Chiefs one was worse to me. The fourth and inches play. Oh, that too. And this is the inconsistency. The fourth and inches play in that third quarter was a really big telling sign for me. After you knew that you didn't weren't able to go down the field and score on the opening drive of the third quarter that you had right after you had just kicked a field goal to go into halftime, the Chiefs are already starting to move the ball on you. And it's like, okay, that was really the turning point. But in the other situations throughout the game, when you had short yarded situations to go, here came Justin Herbert doing his quarterback sneaks and was converting. Sony Michelle gets going to unconversion. So, Sony Michelle barely got the conversion on Isaiah that Spiller? one. Like, yeah, they were doing it. It's just like, like you know, I know that people have their differing difference of opinion on the aggressive Brandon Staley because sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and we're talking about fourth and inches for, from your own thirty-eight. Not as bad as they some, of the, some of the fourth and for it. you know, but it's just from that standpoint of knowing that you know you can't keep this Chiefs team to just field goals. You know you can't have the same results that you had in the first half by just doing the exact same things that you were doing before. You have to put your foot on the gas what and give me, them a different look. What, what, frust, what frustrated me the most, and I use this term sometimes like inevitability, and watching – so the Chargers, you know, they, they find a way. They're, they're still leading – in that second quarter against the Chiefs, right? And they got the ball to end the first half, basically. They get the ball to start to set the third quarter. And I'm like, this is where you win or lose this game. Like, you've got two opportunities here to get 14 points. And if you want to extend it, three opportunities to get 21 points. And the Chargers go field goal the first one, and then punt, punt in the third quarter against the Chiefs. When you could have double digit leads extended. And going up against the Chiefs team, like you you have to. And I'm sorry, but like this is crazy, but 30 points given up to the Chiefs with this defense, like I would have taken it. When you're when your offense is doing that good in the first half, like I'll take it. Your offense cannot score three points on the flip-flop of the second and third quarter. You just can't. And that's the inevitability, where as soon as that stuff starts happening, it has to be mental in this team, where it's like, great, here we go. It's slipping. It's slipping. And then, of course, you know, the Chargers fumble. Here we go again. Somehow, Chargers recover a fumble. Still don't really do anything. They were lucky enough to do that, too. Otherwise, it could have been a lot worse. And so... I don't know if that's aggression, but it's like in those situations, that's when you give the ball to your players and say, go do your thing. Like, let go, go do your thing. Like, ima- like imagine, like, I know it sounds crazy. I is is Justin Herbert Peyton Manning right now, like mentally? Like, does he have control of the game and all? No. But like, imagine if literally, imagine if Justin Herbert went up to Lombardi. And, you know, they're talking, Lombardi's talking to him about, like, the plays they're going to do. And Lombardi's like, you know what? Look, we're 5-4 and four right now. <laughs> we're going up against the Chiefs. Like, at this point, look, Justin, go for it. Like, keys are yours. Go. I can give two shits what happens after that. I can care less if the Chargers win, lose. If I found out after the fact that Lombardi said, you know what? I finally decided... Justin Herbert is too good for me to kind of handcuff him a little bit. Let's ride. Just once. W- let's see what happens. Worst case, it doesn't work, which didn't work. And I think that like, in those gotta have it moments, like give him some ability to play in the sandbox. Whether that's play calling, 
or that situation. He just he seems confined when things go off script lately. Like I I love the play action passes where he kind of throws across the field. Like those are great. And they work, they work almost every time. Why you would end up going away from him, I have no idea when they work as well as they do. But there, there's a lot of adjustments, and I know we're going along on this, but there's a lot of adjustments that they just don't... And again, not just coaching. Like, this isn't... I'm not taking away blame from players either. Like, Justin cannot keep doing that at the end of games. Like, yes, he was pressured, but you can't throw it into... Double coverage. Throw it away. You got third down. Like there, there are things you can do. It it's unfortunate because like it doesn't take away how great Justin Herbert is. But at some point, the greatest in this league overcome other shortcomings and find a way. Like, yes, offensive line is decimated. You are without Mike Williams. You know, you're without Gerald Everett. Sure. Like, find a way. And is the coaching staff hampering that? I don't know. I, I don't know. I would love to get some truth serum, talk to these players a little bit, and ask who they would blame. No one's going to actually answer that. But at some point, these players got to just go do it. So I, I, don't, I don't know what the solution is. Like I don't think Tom Telesco, in my opinion, has any bearing any on the success of this team this year aside aside from not getting a speedy wide receiver at the de- at the deadline what what did telesco do against the niners or against the chiefs where man if only telesco had done blank we would have won that game Dan, Dan, I'm going to close that door before you even open it because that's a podcast for a different day, my friend. <laughs> that is, that's a podcast for a different day, my friend. The Chargers were in position to win all of these I, games. I, I, get what, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying, but that's a podcast for a different day. So, five and five. Long, long and the short of it, the only consistent thing about the Chargers coaching staff this year is that they've been inconsistent. That's basically what I've seen. The inconsistency the ups and downs and the fact of you cannot, you are for some reason, just allergic to playing four quarters of football once this season. Now I'm sure every fan base says, no, they all want their team to play four quarters of consistent. Like give us three. I'll give me one game. I'll take one game. Three quarters. Give me three quarters. One game. (laughs) Show me some consistency from how you start the game to how you finish the game. Show me one game of that. I will ask that out of a 18 game season. Give me one game. That's like that. And I don't so care like, who the, I don't care who the opponent is. So I, I don't even know where to go from here in terms of like this Cardinals game. Well, uh, the, the, the bet online got to talk about bet online real quick. The, well, that, that's and that's fantastic because I'm sure that the bet online lines for this game will considerably change after the news that uh, Ian Rappaport just tweeted down. The flow of the Kyle, Kyler Murray is expected to be back and will start on Sunday. Can't wait. Can't wait. Gotta love it. So Gotta love it. Like the, the one thing I will agree with the, our coaching staff and Brandon Staley talk about stuff is it's not about them. It's about us. Like it's, I don't even know what to talk about the Cardinals team. Cause like, it, it's not about, it's not about the Cardinals. The Cardinals are no better than the Chiefs, obviously. And there are no more weapons on the Cardinals than the Chiefs have. Like, sure, DeAndre oh. Hopkins, Kyler Murray. Sorry, sorry. like, rewind that a second. I thought I got lost in your translation of what you just said. The, like, the Cardinals are no better than the Chiefs. So, like, obviously. Elaborate? <laughs> yep. No, no, no. So, like, what is there to talk about with this Cardinals game? Like, it's not about what the Cardinals are going to do. It's can the Chargers finally F and do something? Thank you. That's that's the right question. Because every game for this Chargers team has literally come down to the wire, whether it is a victory or a loss for this team, you look at the Cleveland game on how that ended for the Chargers in a very fortunate fashion. You look at the Houston game. They kind of let them get back into it toward the tail end of that game. You obviously look at the last two weeks, 
how can you just look that good offensively, defensively in the first half and then just completely look like a different team in the second half? That goes back to my question, Dan, earlier in this show. Do you trust? I know that the players will come to play. As Derwin James said in his post-game interview after this last week, close is not good enough in this league, and he's 100% right. You hearken back to the comments that Austin Eckler said before the season, paper does not play on Sundays, and that's the absolute truth. We're talking year three in Justin Herbert's career. You Again, I am not bringing up the aspect of injuries on this show because other teams have proven that they can go out and make it work. No, as many injury to, as many injuries as this team. No, I, I, but like I still, get it. I get yes. it. The, as you've said, Dan, the great ones, the great quarterbacks, can go out and make it work. Has Justin Herbert been injured? Yes. Thankfully, does he look healthier over these last two weeks? Yes. So I would then expect the coaching staff to then understand that and put these guys in a position to get free and win based off of that rise above that you've been living with adversity this entire season you're going to have to do it for the remainder of the season until you can get some guys back here and there we don't know when joey bose is coming back and the pass rush without him has been i won't go as far as to say abysmal but it's it's pretty close in terms of what you're getting off the edge position aside from khalil mack and derwin Basically. And Derwin, when well, well, when Derwin has to play edge because you're not getting pressure from anywhere else. Yes. So, Dan, now that we know that Kyler Murray is coming back for this game, very, very great, you know, great piece of timing. There Perfect the timing, players. by the way. Yeah. Jake, so, uh, real, real quick, Jake, four and a half point spread is what the last I saw. Chargers advantage. Um, let's talk about our friends over at Bet Online. Four and a half point spread. Are you taking the over under? <laughs> <laughs> Kyler Murray's in. I'm taking the under. I'm sorry. I'm taking that. Oh, yeah, I, I would take the under on that for sure. I would be interested to see how the line's going to fluctuate once. Like, to Vegas the gets bank, I'm it. taking the under. Yeah. I'm not saying they're going to lose. I'm just saying, like, there's no way they're going to win by four and a half. No. Or I'd be no. comfortable putting on money on it. That's for sure. <sighs> I, I don't know. I have to get some thought on that. Um, yeah. Anywho. I uh, want to remind everybody that Bet Online continues to be your number one source for all of your sports betting needs this season. You'll always find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends over at Bet Online. And as your continued source for all sports wagering information, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest ways to bet on all of your favorite sports and, and events, whether that's NFL, NBA, NHL, MMA, tennis, boxing, or even golf. Head on over to betonline.ag to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, to receive your rewards. Bet online where the game starts. So we'll, we'll get into like our predictions for this next game. Like I, I honestly don't think there's any thing to talk about specifically in terms of matchups, all that kind of stuff against this Cardinals team because like it's not about that, in my opinion. Like... I, I I want to see J- Justin Herbert is a top five quarterback talent wise, 100%. No question. I want to see him and this coaching staff act like it. It's not just the coaching staff. It's not just the coaching staff. And at some point, Justin's going to have to kind of take that next level. That's not saying he's bad. It's not saying he's not very, very, very good. But I don't know if he's at the greatness tier. He's still at the very good. And that's just being honest. The greatest overcome. And you can look at Tom Brady. You can look at Patrick Mahomes. You can look at all of these guys who, you know, Josh Allen. Like the stuff they do is like miracles. And you're always like, oh, great. We're losing the miracles again. Here we go. But like, that's what they do. And point blank, Justin Herbert isn't there. Whether that's because he's not playing like it, he's not telling his coaching staff to suck it and do it himself, but he's not there yet. Those other guys do. So that's kind of what I want to see. And people don't want to talk about that. And yes, the coaching staff could use some work. Yes, the play calling. Yes, the injuries. Yes, the... You've, you've got Justin Herbert. 
Like if you have Justin Herbert and Keenan Allen, even if you have hardly an offensive line, like you should be able to do something. And they just they haven't. So like, do do I trust the do, do I do I trust the Chargers defense to do much this game? No. Should I? No. Why do I trust? Why do, I tr- do I trust the Chargers offense? To all of a sudden, kicking the high gear. No. Could they? Sure. Like knowing our luck, offense is going to look good. Defense is going to look good. Special teams is going to suck. Dicker's going to miss three kicks. We're going to lose. Like that's just how this season's gone so far. Hey, and special still teams five and five, teams. which is the crazy part. Special teams is the been the best thing about the. That's probably been the most consistent thing about this unit. Weird, which, right? When was the last time that Weird. we said that? <laughs> so, like, I, Kyler Murray's playing. Jake, who's winning? Like honestly, like I don't, I don't think last week or the week prior were like must win games. Like they, they weren't must win. Like they were huge games, huge opportunities, but they weren't must wins. This is a must win. You I mean, have to up, win. Your back is your back is now up against the wall. You go five and six, it's going to be tough sledding to go anywhere. I personally think that I personally thought that last week was a must win because of the fact that it was a divisional opponent for you against the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. And from the expectations of playoffs, there was still a shot to where you could, if you were to run the table, get some guys healthy. <laughs> hey, look at me. Jake. I'm not, listen, listen, look Jake. at me. All of a sudden, this, there's a different hat on this head. But that was my thought process. Not that it was going to happen but it would have given you a better shot to do so. And somebody tweeted this out. I, I can't remember who it was, but it was literally, I think it was on, I think it was on Tuesday. Someone, no, no, excuse me. It was, it was the day after. Someone said the AFC West, specifically the Raiders, the Broncos, and the Chargers, spent over $1 billion in free agency, and every single one of them is going home after Thanksgiving, pretty much. Like, that's ridiculous. Now, there's we, a lot of, we a lot all of thought that this division, there. Yes, yes. But when we all thought that this division was just going to be a freaking grind house and beating the crap out of each other for the entire day season, it's been anything but, unfortunately. So is, is Dan correct in, the, in this circumstance that is this a must win? Well, yeah. You're, you're now fully in desperation mode. You're not mathematically out of the playoffs yet, but you dropped to five and six with the games that you still have left? Yeah. Jake's draft board's getting already cleaned up. Like, so it's getting Jake, there. Five and it's getting so there. five and five. Do they come out five and six or six and five? <sighs> Dan, so you look at you look at the if you look at the aspects of it, I think they win. I I think they win. I know I'm the optimist, but I think they I think they. No, no, no. I'm. I personally think that the Chargers should win. No, they will should. They, they no, 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 should. No. Will they? Will they win? We know they should win. I'm gonna. Well, I, I'm gonna answer yes my own no. question. Yes I'm gonna no. answer my own question from earlier in the show. Do I trust this coaching staff to put it together and win games like this? Do you trust the players to overcome the coaching staff? Also, no. It's not that I don't trust the players because I know that I know that the players are playing. They're showing they have they have shown their response to adversity all this season. Has it always led to wins? No, it has not. But I just don't trust this coaching staff to put these players in a position to win, especially if they have the lead, Dan. So no. So you think they're gonna lose? So you say they're loose. We know they should win. With with Kyler Murley, again, if this was a Colt McCoy led team. Then I would say absolutely. If the Chargers got for some reason got waxed by Colt McCoy, then we got to open up a whole other conversation. But with Kyler Murray coming back, DeAndre Hopkins is back now. Um, they could still tear you apart. And if if they decide to go to the ground attack earlier than the last two teams have done, which it, they should. Which they should. This could be a very long game for the Chargers. So. You don't trust the coaching staff, so you have the charges losing. <laughs> Jake's is currently choking on his. Pessimism. I made sure I made sure that I hit the <laughs> mute button there before I did, so that nobody heard that. Uh, correct. Okay. Correct. I this maybe this is like the last straw 
are like the me holding on by a thread to my optimism, which I don't even know if you call it optimism at this point. But I just can't. I think somehow. Can you trust him? I, I, it's to me like it's not about trusting the coaching staff. I just can't see this Chargers team losing three straight with some of their guys coming back. Against this time, not as like this. The last two games were against great teams, very good or great teams. This is not a very good team. They have some talented players. It's not the same thing. I just so so for full context, just for what you just said, you you should have. We still don't know what the status is going to be for for Mike Williams if he's going to play in this game. Whatever. Or or from from indications were that it was not a long term or too serious, but we'll still see with the way that injuries have plagued this team. You know. <laughs> You could lose a fingernail and you'll be out for six weeks. But there is there is a good chance that you could get Gerald Everett back for this game and Mike Williams back for this game. So you could actually have your full complement of starters. Starting your weapons. We- yeah, weapons. Starting weapons, yes. yes. Other than Jalen Guyton. <laughs> Correct. You're still without your left tackle. Yes. Again, I said weapons. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, like, I just... We haven't gotten to see this Chargers offense with their weapons, aside from Guyton, since week one and a half. If they can, we saw what that offense looked like against the Chiefs. And it's very different when those guys are out there versus not. And all that talk about Justin Herbert and the offensive coaching staff isn't allowing him to play and throw down the field and be aggressive. Like, No, they were. You saw it all the time. Even in the fourth quarter, you saw it. Did you see it enough? No, but they were doing it. I have the Chargers winning. If they lose, Jake, it is going to be like <laughs> if it, if it's not already Black, Black Monday, like it's going to be Black Monday in November. If some people are already there, first yes. of all, some oh. people are already there. Yes. Um, I think we'd be remiss, Dan, if we did not mention the growth of Josh Palmer over these last couple of weeks. Talk about someone who has carried the load for this receiving group. Stepped up. Yes. Big time. Big time. And to see that next step level of what he can be as a wide receiver and a weapon for this team has been great. I thought he looked fantastic against the Chiefs. You need to get him in more positions like that more often, please. So whatever you need to do from an offensive playbook standpoint, continue to do it continue to find ways to have for, for Josh Palmer to get open. And I'm sure if that you have your full complement of weapons that you have more flexibility to do so. Do the this Chargers is gut, win? This is gut check time, man. It is gut check time, Dan. I this can't even, con- I can't confidently say that the Chargers will win this game, Dan. No. And I say that simply because of the fact that I've seen nothing that gives me confidence. And I'm not talking about these last two weeks. I'm talking about the whole aspect of the entire season. Yeah. You know, the Chargers were fortunate enough. Out of their five wins, there's a couple wins in there that they're very fortunate to have where they got breaks that historically did not go their way. Mm-hmm. So are they a, are they really a fair, I guess, image of a 5-5 five and five record? Are they better? Are they worse? I, I don't think, know. I think now it's, I think they're an accurate five and five team. I think five and three, you're like, damn, I'll take it. Five and three is five and three is five and three. Okay. But then going into those ne- those last two games, they lose their five and five. They got that's what five five and five have te- five and five teams do. Yes. Um I, I think I think you get your full complement of weapons back. There should be no reason that the Chargers should lose this game. Zero. If they can, if they can get to six and five, I've said it. For weeks, if they can get to six and five, let's ride. I want to see six and five get healthier. You can get Joey Bosa back maybe one more week afterwards. Six and five going into the game against, I believe it's Miami, is afterwards. Like we have, we have Arizona, then the Raiders. The, sorry, the Raiders next week. If we can, if we can get to man, if we can get to seven and five going against Miami, that would be the game where maybe Joey Bosa gets back. Like now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. But six and five. Get to six and five. The whole season's in front of you. Five and six. It's gonna be tough sledding to get seven win to get ten wins. It's 
it's almost impossible. Almost. Uh, Jake, I'll say I'll say I'm pessimist. I, I'll say I'm pessimistically optimistic that they. <laughs> and win I'm this optimistically game. pessimistic. On this yeah, one. but they'll win this game. <laughs> I just uh, I just want to see an a game where adjustments can be shown by this coaching staff in game that not game, week to week in game adjustments. Quarter. Yes. Yes. In game adjustments. If they're throwing something at you, I'd like to see something different. I know that you're not going to be able to stop the run in this game. That's just, that's a fact that we've had to live with since the early weeks of this season. How, and like, but like sidebar Jake, how in the hell is that still a thing? Like it, it blows my mind. It just blows my mind. Um, okay. Th- there's a lot of feelings on this one. Uh, a lot of truth serums <laughs> passed out to us. We were telling the truth. Um, it's going to be a big, 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 big. I can't say that word enough. How big? Big, big, big. This game is for these players, coaches. Like, it, it's this is huge. Th- this is arguably the biggest game of... Joe it's, Lombardi's. It's, it's, it's so you're saying it's win or go home after this game. No, I think it's win or lose your job. <laughs> who who would be losing their job? Coaching staff, especially. Not necessarily Brandon Staley yet. If you lose this game, someone's someone's losing their job. Period. That's that's my well, that's my call. You're talking come Monday or coming the end of the season. I wouldn't be surprised come Monday. I know that's not. I know it's not a Telesco Spanos thing. Yeah, but they like, don't do that. Yes, but they also don't get Khalil Mack. They also like there's a lot of things that they don't do, and they did it. The so, heads will roll if they lose this game. That's all I'm saying. Um, Jake, you can find Jake getting healthier and healthier by the minute soon in his new house at Jake D Hefner, myself at Dan W Sports. Uh, guys and gals, thank you again for putting up with us and the hiatus we had. Lots of life stuff going on, but we are back. Uh, do yourself a favor. Breathe a little bit. Have a couple libations, if you will. Enjoy your Thanksgiving with your family in these next couple days. Lots of things to be thankful for. Even in the depths of these losses we've experienced as Chargers fans, um, focus on things to be grateful for, both in and outside of football. Uh, Jake, grateful for you. Great for LFB, Chargers Unleashed, all the fans, listeners. Um, let's get this Chargers victory, and we'll talk to you guys next time on Chargers Unleashed. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Enjoy your Black Friday shopping if you're shopping. We'll talk to you soon.